Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and I'm still working on my blue-footed boobies. And yes, there are two of them now. This is the lady booby. Um, we're going to be able to tell because of the pupils in her eyes, uh, strangely enough. This one is Mr. Booby and he does have his foot up in the air. So he's, he's the dancing booby and she's supposed to be, you know, standing there looking at his foot saying, Ooh, nice foot. <laughs> I, have, I haven't quite decided yet how I'm going to uh, build a stand for them because she doesn't need one. She does still stand up quite nicely on her own two feet, which is kind of what this whole booby project started out to show you how to do. <laughs> and then I got a little carried away as normal. Now in the last video I showed you how I put the armature together with the crumpled paper and how I actually built those feet and the, the little um, wire sling um, that helps hold up the bird so that you can use that with any kind of bird really uh, it's it's a challenge getting a two-footed animal of any kind even humans to stand up on their own two feet without putting them on a base but with the sling type thing that i use for lady booby um, it really does work now in this video i'm going to show you how i put the air dry clay on there how i made those feathers and in the next video, I'll have uh, the primer on there and I'll paint them. I have a video that shows you how to make those feathers. And I totally ignored my own advice. I didn't use the kind of uh, tape that I had used in the previous video. Those feathers turned out so nice. I was so happy with them. But that tape was all the way down in the basement and I was too, too lazy to go down and get it. So I used the, you know, the, the tape that I happen to have right here in the studio. I thought it would work just fine. It didn't. If you're making feathers for any kind of bird, make sure that you watch the first video about the feathers <laughs> and don't make them the way I did for this um, project. Now let's go ahead and get started. I used the Silky Smooth Air Dry Clay recipe that's on my website for most of the boobies, except for the brown paper strips and paste that are on the feet and <laughs> for the epoxy clay called Magic Sculpt that I use for the heads. I'm sure that you could use the air dry clay for the beaks and eyes too, but it's easier for me to use the epoxy clay. And I had some in the studio, so that's what I used. And as you can see, the eyes seem to be part of the beak structure, the, the part of the head that doesn't have any feathers on it and it's all kind of the same color. So I sculpted them along with the beak. Now while the epoxy was curing, it took overnight, um, I went ahead and built 11 feathers for each bird. And I don't want to show the, <laughs> very much of this part because I use this silly packing tape that you have to moisten on the back to get it to stick. It just doesn't stick well enough and it came loose around some of the edges, especially right at the top where the, the wire shaft was a little bit too close to the place where I cut it. Don't do it like I did. Um, click on the link down below in the description to see how to do it right. The packing tape had to dry overnight because it's wet on the inside, of course. There was a real thin wire right in between two pieces of the packing tape. After it was all dry, I covered them up with masking tape because the packing tape is kind of slick. And then I drew on them uh, just and cut out the feathers. I made the wire toes in the previous video. And that, that was part of that sling system that holds the bird up. So now I just cut out the web foot out of the pattern. Uh, you can find the pattern on my website. I'll put a link to it down below if you want to use it, or you can just draw your own. I just cut out the webbed part of the foot and taped it on to the two toes <laughs> that I already had. And then I cut uh, two more pieces of wire for the, for the other two toes. Then I, I went back over it with some really, really thin aluminum wire to make the claws. Uh, I just thought that was going to be a lot easier than trying to sculpt them. Once I had the feet all on there, I taped the feathers onto the wings and tail. When, when a booby is relaxed, they point their tail straight behind them. But when they're courting, like these two are, they hold their tail straight up. So I tried to make the tails look like most of the photographs that I see of boobies that are admiring each other's blue feet. Now the one thing that I did have to be real careful of was to make sure that I didn't make the longest 
feather on the wings actually go down too much because then it would have run into the table when it was being displayed and the the bird wouldn't stand up straight anymore. So I was trying to be real careful of that. And once I had them taped on with masking tape, I went over that tape with some air dry clay. I wanted to make sure that they were, that the feathers were on there really solid before I started working on any of the rest of it. And then I had to, of course, let that dry overnight. The next day I started working on the rest of the air dry clay. I, I started with the head. They have a, a, a almost straight line right across uh, the top of the beak um, between the eyes, um, just a little bit in front of the eyes actually. And it's kind of straight. That's just, their, their hairdo is very distinctive and I wanted to get that right. And then I also kind of practice a little bit with a little a sculpting tool that I have. I put the air dry clay on fairly thick and then just kind of jabbed at it and, and played with it until I could get the, to, to get the, the feathers on the, the head and the neck to kind of poke up and be sort of sharp the way they are in the photographs. I'm kind of hoping that this will help me get the sort of polka dotty look the, of the real light colors and the real dark colors that are on the neck and head. I'm hoping that the sculpting itself will kind of help help me do that without having to paint on every single little dot. I still haven't painted them so I don't know if that's going to work or not. But I do like that the way it came out. It, it looks, um, I think, fairly realistic. I, I really like the way that looked. Now there was still enough dry area on the bird so I could hold them while I put the air dry clay on their chest and underneath them. I didn't put any like feather textures or anything there, but I also didn't smooth it off really a lot with a, 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 a damp knife like I could have. It's just right kind of soft fluffy feathers and so I didn't want it to be too slick. And I didn't put it on very thick either because it really wasn't necessary. Now by that time, of course, there wasn't enough dry areas left for me to be able to hold it safely and work on any other part of the bird, so I had to set them aside and let them dry overnight again. The next thing I worked on were the wings, and they took a while because it, it, it took me a, a little bit of practice to, to see how I really liked getting them on there. Um, there's several layers of longer feathers above the paper mache feathers and then there's an area up at the top of the wing and on her shoulders that has feather texture but not very much. They're, they're really uh, feathers that are laying down quite flat against each other. So we've got some texture on there. I kind of wanted to show how the, uh, the feathers were separated. They ended up not looking the same <laughs> on both birds, but that's okay because, you know, two different birds wouldn't look the same anyway. But I did discover that the easiest ways to make those, um, the layers of feathers seem more separated was to go ahead and make lines across the wet clay first and then start sculpting in the feathers uh, using those lines uh, as a way to uh, make the the layer is a little bit more obvious. I ended up with, they're, they're not exactly realistic, I don't think. You know, I wasn't really trying for um, uh, photographic realism here, but I think they do look feathery, and I, I just, uh, I, I kind of like the way they ended up looking. I think if I had taken a whole lot more time, I actually could have gotten photorealism, but that really wasn't what I was after. I could only do one wing at a time on each bird because I ran out of a uh, place to hold on to. <laughs> so I had to put them aside again and let them dry overnight. Th th this uh, project took a really long time because of all the drying that had to, had to happen. Then I did the other wings, of course. And by the time that one was done, I was able to do the back. The, the back has some very distinctive feathers right towards the center of the back that are, those feathers are bigger and they have some white, um, they're kind of defined by some white lines and some dark lines. They're very distinctive. So I made the feathers up close to her tail and close to her neck, 
kind of not very well defined and then I made some larger feathers in that uh, center area and I do think it'll, it's going to look really nice when they're done. I had to let them dry again of course and then while you weren't looking I went ahead and added a layer of brown paper mache to the feet and legs. Um, you could use um, newspaper too. I just happen to have brown paper here and that's what I used. I used wood glue to stick it on but that was only because it just seemed kind of silly to mix up some flour and water paste. It needed such a small amount so I just I just went ahead and used some wood glue that I had here. And then I added a little puff of feathers that are at the top of the legs uh, with the air dry clay and let them dry again overnight. The female booby that actually has both feet flat on the table is now standing up really nice. Uh, the, the paper mache that I added and the air dry clay up at the top of that leg really made everything nice and solid and she would not need a base at all. There's two more things that I have to do. This is getting to be a long project. <laughs> I thought it was going to be really fast. I, I, that didn't turn out to be true. Um, but what I get to do next is put some spray primer on there. I'm going to do that just because I'm not entirely sure that the paint will stick to the masking tape. I did try some on the masking tape and you know just to, just to make sure it would stick and it did but I'm still going to put the primer on it just to make absolutely sure and then I'm going to go ahead and paint them that'll be in the next video after that I'm going to make a stand for them so that they can be looking at each other and courting and I don't know how I'm going to do that yet I'm kind of thinking about making the stand out of layered cardboard and doing kind of a rockscape sort of thing with um, paper mache clay over it but that sounds like a lot of work. So if you have an idea that you think would look better or be a lot easier <laughs> to do than that, please uh, leave a comment down below. I'd really appreciate it. Now, watch out for the next videos. And in the meantime, go make something <laughs> and come visit me at ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.